Welcome everybody to Waterbox Live. Waterbox Wednesday is here. The best day of the week. It is. For sure. We're here every week, you guys. 6 p.m. Eastern. Like, share, subscribe. Um, and hit those notifications. Yes. Um, and this is an exciting week because the frag build is getting coral today. Um, the first round is going in. Super exciting. Fish went in with some cleaner shrimp last week. Mm -hmm. They're doing amazing. Um, and this week we get to see some corals from Worldwide Corals. Yeah, we're going to walk you guys through it today. It's a great show. So stick around for the whole thing. And we're going to drop the intro right now. <laughs> What is in the cups today? Yeah. I have tequila. And I'm drinking some vodka. Vodka. Tito's. Mixing it up this week. But Cheers. it is happy hour either way. Cheers. Cheers, you guys. It's it's 6 p.m., so it's definitely 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock so. somewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so this week we have, not only are we adding corals in here, but we also have a pretty exciting promo code that we Worldwide do. World has given us for you guys to use on their website. Can yeah, so so Worldwide Corals was so generous, you guys. So those of you that have water boxes all, already, or any tank for that matter, salt water, head over to WorldwideCorals.com. They're giving you 15% off all frags and colonies. The code's right there. It's WBLive15 at checkout and ends 816. So it's live now. Take advantage of that. That's a big discount on some awesome corals. So Yeah, so once you see what's going into the frag today, you're going to want to run over there and get mm -hmm. yourself a... Some beautiful corals at a good discount. So we have the promo code. That's awesome already. Yep. We have a Worldwide Coral gift card to give away today as well. We do. You guys got to stick around to the end to get that. Yes. Got some swag thrown in there. Mm -hmm. And we also have the, what the centers, all, all the centers around is yeah. the frag build that we're doing and the frag tank giveaway. Yes. So you guys, if you're new with us today, during this is a 10 week series we're going through how to set up a reef aquarium with our frag series and at the end of this thing we're giving away a frag 105.4 plus xr edition what? that xr means we're giving away the tanks the aquarium system with ecotech marine lighting that's amazing and there's a lot of different ways that you can get entries in here you go sign up um and there are different Key, you know actions that you can do that will allow you to get more entries into mm -hmm. this we are on week eight of ten so it is winding down soon you got a couple more weeks to get in all those entries um you know here he's going to show you <laughs> <laughs> he's working on it um and this is showing the things that you can do to get your entries and um then as you go down the page you're going to see also all of the episodes. So if you are just tuning in today, you have a lot of catching up you to do. do and yeah. you do want to watch this. We are using um, Ecotech equipment. It is, you know, awesome. We got Versa, we got the Radions, we got the MP40s, um, pretty much everything to the top notch on this one. Yeah. And we're showing, you know, installation setup, all that. So it's a really great series. Go catch up on there. I want to throw in one other thing here, you guys. For those of you watching the United Kingdom, or Europe for that matter, this contest, we are giving away two frag systems, by the way. Insanity. So, yeah, so we're giving away a frag here in the US as well as to our customers in Europe and the United Kingdom. So you head over to waterboxaquariumseu.com or waterboxaquariums.co.uk, you can sign up there. So we're showing the love around the world. We, because we're all over the world. Yes. We are. We are worldwide. Yes, yes we are. 30 um, plus countries to be exact. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> so we had the pleasure um, of visiting Worldwide Corals to check out their fish and get our first round of fish last mm -hmm. week. And then this week was getting the corals and we got to check out the infamous Worldwide Coral Farm. This thing it is huge. It was amazing. And you get a sneak peek view into it as well. So we took some video footage while we were there. Let's check it out. Yeah. 
All right, so we are back at Worldwide Corals this week to actually get some corals for the Frag 105.4 build. This is what you guys have been waiting for. We're going to go inside and show you one of the most impressive coral farms here in the world. They have thousands of corals. Let's not waste any time. Let's get on inside. So we all know that Worldwide Corals is known for their amazing selection of frags and high-end corals. And we are here today for week two um, at their farm to see where it all begins. So Joe, yep. whenever you first get in, say, new corals or colonies, what, what does the coral have to go through before it even gets into the aquaculture? Yep, so once the corals are received, they're checked in, you know, they're checked for you know, a clean bill of health. You know, we check them for parasites, you know, damage from shipping, anything like that and make sure it's healthy and it will be quarantined before it moves its way through the farm to become eventually a fully aquaculture coral. That is awesome. Very important for the health to the coral, to the customer, for your own systems, yep. all of that. What do we have here behind us? Yeah, so we'll go through here and you'll see this is uh, primarily all of our website and uh, eBay selection. So this is where all our corals will come to be photographed once they're fully aquacultured in our farm. And we'll set aside all the packs here and if you go through, you know, you'll see uh, standard inventory, you know, a re you know, orange recordia, zinnias. We've got beginner packs, uh, softies here, acans. So this is where we like to separate everything for all our different avenues of corals sold online. You guys do sell, you know, you guys have live sales a lot. You yep. have them on your website. And great thing about this is the picture on the website, order and live, is the actual coral you're getting. Yeah, it so is physically, the what you see is what you get. Yeah, so when you work your way through our website, you'll see, you know, there's frag packs, which are going to be, you know, represented by the photos of what you're going to get. And then all the WYSIWYG corals are the exact frag that's out for sale. That is awesome. So, how big is this farm? Yep. So inside this side of the store is the main farm. It's 31,000 gallons, all said, and it's lit by just about 320 radions. Oh my God, 320 radions in this place. And you said something total volume within the whole store yep. is? About 44,000 with our store and office next door. 44,000 gallons of water in this place. Yep. That is awesome. Oh yeah. So let's take a look at the rest of the farm. Let's go. All right, Joe, so we were talking about how everything comes in, goes to like a quarantine, yep. and then goes to grow out. So what do we have in this area right here? Yeah, so this is one of the small isolations we house here inside the farm. So we'll start over here, you know, a lot of the anemones prepared, uh, prepared by us and fragged will go in here to be, you know, separated so they're not stinging other corals. They have certain requirements that, you know, for propagation need to be met, mm -hmm. you know, for them and them only. So we separate all these eight, uh, ten tanks here are separated just for certain corals. So you have like, Anemones, yep. star polyp, zoanthids, yep. like xenia. So keeping them separate allows you to, you know, make sure the conditions and like things like just the water quality and the flow lighting are all Correct. met to that exact kind of need. Yep. And then from here, they move over to the larger systems yep. right here. They can make their way into our main farm, and if the frags are healthy and ready for the website, they can end up there as well. Okay. So what happens here? This is mostly for continuing yep. to grow them out and aquaculture them. Yep. Okay. So here you'll see a lot of our euphelia uh, spaced out in this tank here with some, you know, pipe organs. You know, this to, for this idea, this tank is going to be, you know, specifically dedicated for them as well. So That's you'll see they're all separated. That way they're not stinging. They're getting proper light and proper flow. That's awesome. So whenever you're looking at a farm, as far as like an aquaculture farm, is keeping them specific to their needs with similar corals. Correct. It's going to help you have them grow and... Yep. We'll sell the best frag we can. Perfect. Awesome. Once they've gone through here, they've been aquaculture for a while, they've been fragged up, yep. they're ready, where do they go next? Yeah. So, you know, the euphelia, you know, once it's healthy and ready for sale, like it can make its way back out to the stores for sale or mm -hmm. the website. Um, and if it's something we don't have already in aquaculture, you know, we'll continue to move it through the quarantine process to make its way to be, you know, f you know, truly stamped of aquaculture, let it grow and healthy in our other systems. All right, Joe, so you've got all these farm vats, yep. tons of gallons in here. About how many frags do you think you have on hand? So we're roughly between 50 and 65,000 frags on hand at any given time. Oh my just, God. <laughs> just depending on the fragging, you know, cycle. That is an insane number, but it's making sure that you have a ton of variety and some of the most beautiful stuff out there. What, show us some of the stuff you do have in here. Yeah, let's go through. So, like we said, here's, you know, our euphelia tank. Most of the tank, you know, all dedicated for them on the left side. 
a certain flow and lighting requirements just for them. And euphelia is going to be one of the things that we have a good amount into yep. the frag because we're doing a little bit more like of a flowy build. And euphelia is like hammers, torches, frog spawns, very popular, yep. lots of different varieties. They're a great coral. Yep, good place to start. Yes. And then uh, if you come back this way, you'll see some of our uh, LPS mixed into this tank that you know require lower flow as well. So you know, in lower light, we'll have you know a large selection of Bauer Bankies here, uh, some Acans that were just uh, recently fragged. We've got Blastos. Yes, some beautiful. I love Blastos, so this is a beautiful selection. Yep, that's Absolutely some of the newer ones that are uh, just got fragged recently, and then you'll see some of them are haven't made their way all the way down yet to be fragged and some more euphelia and zoanthids that just uh, made their way into the aquaculture system. So once something gets fragged, you're giving it plenty of time to heal, regrow yep. a bit before it goes anywhere for sale. Yep, it needs to look pretty, you know, before it's a happy, healthy frag before it makes its way for sale. Perfect, awesome. And then if you continue to come back this way, you know, it's gonna be a higher light system. This is where we keep a lot of our softies. So you'll see the nephia leathers, the cabbage leathers, toadstools, um, a good variety up in this tank, as well as some ganiopores on the end whole bunch of leathers in here it's beautiful and then down here is one of our mixed systems with mostly zoanthids um, we've got some caps grown out as well as uh, frags being isolated by type uh, to continue their way into the aquaculture so you'll see they're already segmented on larger frag plugs that is awesome and you can see there's just everywhere you turn there's more coral vats yep. uh, there's so much stuff going on in here and you've got three really beautiful displays right here. Yep. Um, loving the very large peninsula style look to it. How big are these? Yep, so each of these tanks are 750 gallons. Wow. And each are on a dedicated system. So this one is one of our uh, primarily mixed reefs again. Uh, so we're going to house everything from zoanthids, euphelia, uh, acros on the top, and you know some favias in between as well. So you're like talking about filtration. So you've got designated filtration for each of these displays. Yep. For the long runs of coral vats, like are they all on one sump? Yep. And so each row is a dedicated system, so all the plumbing and filtration is tucked below okay. uh, each of the systems. And that helps you decide what's going to be in each system as well because the parameters Correct. and stuff like that. Yep. Um, for this many corals and you know focusing on health and growth and color, how often are you guys testing your water? Yeah, so we have a full-time you know testing team that does nothing but check each of the. Uh, about 40 systems we have, you know, running in between the store and, and full-time testing team. Oh, yeah. oh my god! <laughs> yep, between uh, you know maintenance of doing water changes and testing, it takes about all day, every day. Wow, that is crazy to test water all day. I would not want that job. <laughs> yep, it takes a special kind of person, that's for sure. So going down here, you've got like a mixed reef. Yep. This one, I see we've got some acros and SPS yep, kind of starting to fill in. Yep, it's uh, primarily our SPS system here. Uh, it's, it's, you know, we let it sit longer, being that it's going to be a primarily SPS system. So it's been we're coming up with just on about a year now, wow. and you can see the just about the first batch of corals are really starting to encrust and take off in there. Yeah, SPS are beautiful corals, but they take a long time. They're all not instant reward. It's yep. going to take a long time for this to fill in. It'll look beautiful, but it will yep. look awesome. Once it takes no off, it'll really take off. All right, and on the end here, what yep. do we have? Looks like another mix, right? Yep. So this one has a more fine sand bottom. Uh, another mixed tank that we do, you know. Here for all of our aquaculture systems. Lots so of flowy stuff. I like the look of it. Oh yeah. Yes. All, all all the system is all aquaculture for this side of the farm. Oh very so awesome. So everything we've grown out for years and years, you know, makes its way into this display. All right, so we're in like the final part of the farm. This is where everything goes when it is, you know, the worldwide coral signature. It's pest free, it's grown out, it's yep. aquacultured, and this is where you're gonna find most of the things that are available for sale, stamped by worldwide. That's it. So this is our final stage of aquaculture. You know, this is everything, like you said, it's signature corals from us that have been grown in captivity for years and years. And there's a lot going on in here, and I just have to kind of take a quick note is like, as we've been walking through these uh, lines, as how many MP40s are kind of stuck everywhere? There's controllers everywhere. Like, how many of these do you think are in this farm? Yeah, so we house, it's just about 300 uh, MP40s that we've, you know, got mounted across the entire farm. Wow. And, you know, same goes as lighting as it does flow. You know, every tank is going to have different requirements, so the settings, you know, are all going to change tank by tank. That is awesome. So you know where your corals are coming from whenever you get them from Worldwide Corals. You can check them out online, in the store. Either way, you're going to get a beautiful selection. I can't wait to see what we're picking out for our tank. Yep, yeah, let's go. All right, guys, now that we've taken a tour of the farm, we're here in the retail store. This is where you're actually going to be able to come into the store and pick out these awesome corals. Uh, Joe and Jess are going to walk you through these systems. 
So we've got some nice big uh, tanks here, just chock full of beautiful coral that have mostly come from the farm. And um, so for the frag, we're kind of looking at flowy stuff, but you have so much different yep. things. Like here, this is just full of LPS, Ganyapores and Euphelias, um, the kind of stuff we're looking for for our tank. But there's a lot of nice variety in here. Perfect. So yeah, we can go walk through and I'll kind of show you what we got going on. So each side is 34 feet long, and these tanks uh, are two separate systems, one on each side, and each house about 1,000 gallons, and are separated the same way to keep corals happy depending on what they are. So we started down there with the you know, Euphelia, soft LPS. Here you'll see one of our acro tanks, which houses a lot of our uh, growing out acros, as well as frags already out here for sale. Nice, and this one looks like to be a lot of uh, acros as well. Yep. Yep, we've got a lot of acros making their way out for sale, so you'll see frags of them already starting to come out and priced for sale. So, we're not doing any types of, you know, SPS or acros really in the frag build, um, you know, but there is a beautiful selection here. And they're one of those things that's a little bit more advanced, can yep. take extra care, more lighting, all of those things. So it's definitely something that you don't want them to guide you towards if you're going to do these types of corals. Correct. Yep. All right. And then we'll come down here, you'll see this is going to be our lower flow section, these two tanks on the end. So a lot of newer corals that are loose that need to be glued or, you know, stuck to rubble before they're put on a frag plug will come down here. So you'll see, you know, Gorgonian frags, you'll see, you know, some lower flow zoos. And then when we come into this side, you'll see a lot of our Recordia mushrooms, you know, up here for sale. Some Xenia, stuff that likes to grab onto that rock work. See some beautiful anemones in here too. We even have some basket yep. of some long tentacles. These are uh, actually Condi anemones up here. Oh, okay. And then a lot of the bubble tips are down here for sale. Very, very nice. And coming on here is just a big row of nice, beautiful frags. Yep, so here you'll see all LPS in this tank here. Nothing but, and the flow is nice and low for them. The lighting's a little bit softer than the SPS side. So you'll see all the frags are always open and ready, you know, ready to be sold. Awesome, what do we have coming down here? So here is another mixed tank. You'll see Zoas all in the front side for sale with you know some montiporas in the back and acrofrags as well making their way into our display tanks up front okay so there's a little bit of everything mixed in here yep and then coming back down here is back kind of here. like our type of tank that we're looking to do lots of the flowy stuff you know yep. the lps mainly a little bit of softies in there um, and we've actually had the chance to pick out the coral that is going to be going into the tank uh, for this week and we have them set aside, yep. letting them kind of open up so we can show you what we picked out. What did we end up going with today, Joe? Yeah, so we picked out a, a good selection of LPS to kind of get you started. We've got a couple different types of hammer, you know, the green branching hammer, the splatter blue and green hammer. We've got a, a bower banky up here, some red acans, some softies with a green ephthia, cinularia. We've got a cabbage, leather, a bicolor hammer, and another rainbow acan. Nice. A lot of variety. We're going to get some nice motion in there with the hammers yep. um, and then, you know, some good splatters of colors with the other LPS in yep. there. So it's going to be a really, really good start to the frag. All right, Joe. So you guys have a beautiful selection of corals. They're healthy. They're colorful. Your fish are, you know, great. What would you say are like your key key elements of success that you would pass along to anyone who's watching, looking to get into their first aquarium, or even if it's their fifth aquarium, yeah. like what are your golden rules almost? Yeah, so things you can't miss out on are just definitely maturity. That's definitely the biggest thing is not rushing the tank, you know, making sure it's fully cycled. And the tank, as the tank matures, you'll see, you know, success will just become easier and easier. As long as you keep up with the, you know, the more important things with the tank, which are going to be flow, mm -hmm. lighting, and water chemistry. So. If you're testing on a regular basis, keeping up, you know, all the phosphates are low, the nitrates are low, you'll see your corals respond faster and have better success long term. So really starting off with the right equipment from yep. the beginning, you know, consistency, testing, you know, are going to be big things for success, you Correct. would say. Yep. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yep. Thank you, guys. <laughs>
We've been looking. We have not found one. So we hear you. Well, drop a link. Let us yeah, know what put, the magic answer is. Put a link in the comments is. because we, we know we need it. We just don't have it. We haven't been able to find a good one. Tried other ones. It's not yeah. been good. Um, but on an awesome note, so we are, um, after you know, a little bit of a long video before we're about to go put the corals into the tank, we have a swag. A sh Swag, swag. swag winner Show wag. Um, for a water box t-shirt look at this you guys this thing's soft <clears throat> it's so comfortable it's so soft and it's got the water box <laughs> logo on it <laughs> i'm wearing one all the time it is so comfortable uh. try it one um so all right we have a winner of this water box yes shirt. he is on facebook so congratulations daniel webster we're sending you a water box t-shirt it's a wonderful shirt Email um, support at waterboxaquariums.com and get with them. They'll get you out the proper size shirt to you. Congratulations. We still have a Worldwide Coral gift card to give away. You have do. to stay tuned because the fun stuff is still coming. Mm -hmm. Adding the coral that we picked out while we went down there to yep. the frag today. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and everyone was commenting about hot yeah. sauce. Yeah, that's what I wanted to point out. Um, yeah, so you got bounce sauce with three chili pepper heat. And we got the Diablo sauce. This is a ghost pepper sauce, you guys. There's no need for that. I'm actually really excited to try these. <clears throat> Worldwide's been selling these for a while, and you can get them, pick them up on their website as well. They so sent us some out. along with the corals yeah, to try, I'm try out. These we out. haven't I'm, tried I'm not it trying yet. Out tonight. I'm not trying the Diablo. 100% <laughs> not. Um, but yeah, check them out. Everyone's asking about the hot sauce and stuff like that. We're not giving away because we're just got to eat. You know, yeah, try yeah. Them, I got to so. gotta try them out tonight. All right, but. But maybe we can get them to, you know. I think, up. I think Worldwide has them, right? You got them? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, anyway, let's go put some corals into the yes. frag. Let's go check them out. Yes. Looking at the tank here, everything is looking good. Um, all the fish and shrimp from last week have adjusted. They come out pretty, pretty well now. The little geometric hawkeye is still pretty shy. Um, but he is hopping around, kind of hiding in little, little spots in the rock. We can see the clownfish, the bangai, royal grama, and the three shrimp are in, happy, doing well. We've been testing the water, of course, and uh, making sure everything is good to go for the corals to go in. And we've got our worldwide here, all backed up for us. And we're going to open them and get them into the tank. In here for you. So... I'm going to just go ahead and wait for the lens. That's fine. You can start. All right. So I'm just going to grab and open here as we see. We picked them all out, so you kind of saw them there. And I am just going to cut open the bag. And just be real gentle, especially if you've got corals and stuff shipping to you. Just be real careful handling with them. They've been through a somewhat traumatic experience. And here we have a little hammer coral. And you will notice, like, this thing has looked um, really big when it's nice and open, so it has shrunk down quite a bit, and that is common whenever they get shipped. So he's going to be nice, open, and flowy. I think nice front and center right there for him to fill out will be a good choice. So there's one. Not looking like we got some acans coming up here next. So everything is pretty much mostly LPS in this tank. We're going flowy along with some cool stuff like acans um, and barobankies and stuff. So these are rainbow acans, and they hide most of their color when they're closed, but they do kind of fluff out and they have lots of stripes and colors, especially towards the center, that you'll see quite a bit more as they open. Now these are not quite as high of light needing as some of your other stuff. So I might kind of have to work with where I want to put them Jess, I knew it was going to come in. And I'm going to put them up front, not quite under the lights directly. I knew the question was going to come in, so I'm going to answer it. They're asking, we're not drip acclimating or anything like that. <laughs> no, we're not. And guys, I highly recommend doing that. But what we did is we matched up our parameters almost identically to worldwide. So there's not really much difference in our water versus theirs. So um, remember, we are doing this live. So yes, dip your corals, acclimate your corals, highly recommend it. Um, but. Yes, and so like, like you were saying, um, you know, knowing the parameters that they're coming from and your water parameters and knowing that they're very close is helpful. Uh, we also know that the dipping and all that process of worldwide is very good, so we don't have to worry nearly as much about that. Um, however, you should pretty much always still acclimate and dip, but we're kind of doing it this way. So this is a Bower Banky. Uh, this is an awesome one. It has a lot of like speckly color to it, pink, purple, 
um, some kind of orange, and then you got all that green sparkles in here. I'm going to put him, because that's like a showpiece kind of coral right there. Front and center, kind of tucked in nice there. Bower Bankies are awesome. Yes, that was by special request, actually. Yes. If you guys have any questions, post them below. We'll try to get them. We're going to do a short Q&A here after we, we get the corals in the tank. Um, so post your questions below. We'll try to get to as many as we can. We also have Ask Jess coming up, too. Um, and remember, pretty much all corals are going to shrink up quite a bit during um, bagging and um, all of that. So these are all going to expand quite a bit. We have a, another hammer here. That one's kind of like a splatter hammer. It's very like neon green, and it's going to have like different uh, like shades almost on each tentacle. Some are going to be greener than others and kind of like a splatter type appearance. <clears throat> And anytime you put corals in, I kind of just place them where I want them to be and then view them over the next day or two. If they're not opening well, try a different spot. They may not like the mm -hmm. lighting or the flow that they're at. So you do sometimes have to adjust where you put them. And it's not always in the spot you might want them. <coughs> Chuck we got Town them. Corvette says, no glue? No, we're not going to glue anything just yet. If we find a really good spot for them, uh, we might secure them down. But a lot of times we can just kind of you know, kind of push them into like a, the rock and they'll stay there pretty well. Right. And um, it just really depends. Yeah. I never glue them um, as soon as they go in because you're going to probably change their spot based upon where they're actually happy. Mm -hmm. um, here's another rainbow A can. You can actually see some of the colors in the center here. Got a lot of different like pink, orange, and all that stuff in the middle. And then your red and pink outside. And those will fluff up quite a bit. But almost. I'd say a lot of times right where you put them in the beginning is not where they're going to be the happiest. So don't go in and glue and epoxy them right away. Give them a few days. If they're super happy, go ahead and put them more secure if you want to. Like I said, since A cans and all that don't need quite as much high highlight, we're going to keep them not directly under the radions. Brian says he loves escape. Thanks, Brian. That was all Jess. It is so, and it's my, I think it might be one of the favorite scapes that I've ever done. And yeah, that I really says like a it. lot, like, I've done really a lot like of them. It. I like it a lot. The Carib Sea Life Rock is, is a very good scaping rock because they're, the shapes are kind of like predetermined, so you can, it's relatively. They lock in together really nice, and you got mm -hmm. arches and stuff like that. So, you know, caves, arches, round, you can really make any shape that you want. Here's another really nice hammer, kind of a bright yellow green on this one. And this one is going to be pretty big when he opens all the way. Pulse Online says, did you guys bring those back from Worldwide Corals during your trip, or did they ship them to you? We actually picked these out when we were on location, and we picked them up today to bring them to our headquarters. Back there. Yep. Nice hammer. That looks like another hammer. So our, our uh, kind of motif or theme for this tank is going to be uh, mostly LPS or just things that are flowy, a few softies and all that, but we want things with movement. So you'll see that we have a lot of euphelias, which are torches, hammers, frog spawns um, <clears throat> going in here. And then as we're next round, we're going to be looking at like ganiaporas and stuff. So that's like a true splatter hammer, as you'll see each of the tips is like a purple or green. It almost look like a paintbrush splattered the tips on here. Um, so you'll see a lot of what we're going to be doing in here is going to be really nice, flowy type of corals. Nice one there. It's going to be a pretty big colony. ADH says, Team Jess all the way. <laughs> well, thank you. Jess always has fans. <laughs> Uh, let's they see like here. the knowledges, you know. Yeah, they love the knowledges that you drop every week. We have some leathers that are going in just because they add a real nice vibrancy and they'll kind of fill in some of the other areas. Uh, and then some leathers can be really nice and flowy. This is like a lettuce type of leather, super neon, like yellow green. So it's going to be just a really nice pop of color. These don't need a ton of light, so you can kind of use them to fill in uh, lower lane areas if you wanted to, depending on your scape um, or just. I don't really know where. You just kind of move stuff whenever you want to. I'm just going to kind of wedge them in. There's some really good questions coming in. I, I can't even There's get There's that to one. Room. Unofficial Gaming HD says, what does LPS mean? That's a great question. LPS means uh, large polyp stony coral. So th that's like corals such as 
Uh, you see in there the the hammer corals and what other ones do we have in there? Just um, the hammer coral. They're mostly hammers in there right now. Okay. Um, and then we've got the akins and the yeah. banky. LPS just means it has a hard skeleton, but kind of a, like a fleshy. Yeah, a fleshy look to polyp, it. much larger uh, polyps. To so this them. is a leather too, but like it's going to be a larger branchy one, so it's going to give some flow, but also that nice green, uh, bright, bright color. And you will find. Um, Green corals are probably some of your more common ones you're going to find. They're super bright. They're really pretty to add to a tank. And a lot of times you'll find some of the stuff that's a little bit easier to put in your tank in the beginning tends to be green. So don't worry if you get a lot of green in the beginning. You're going to bring in a lot of other colors as the tank matures and you add more corals into there. Wetside Reefer says, question for you guys. You guys pick the radions, but sell your systems paired with AIs. Do you prefer the radions? No, we don't. So we, the reason we're using radions on this particular system is because we just started offering them as an option with our tanks. Um, you can go both ways. It's kind of, it, it, you know, the radions are the, the high end of the spectrum. Worldwide uses them on, on all their systems, as you guys saw in the video. So it was a great fit for this particular video, yeah. for this particular system. The whole thing set up with Ecotech. Dosers, Yeah, we went pretty much the Ecotech theme on this as far as that goes. And then, of course, the lights. Um, and really, you can't go wrong with radions or uh, hydros or yeah. any of the Ecotech yeah. AI lighting. So here's another leather. Um, sometimes leathers are kind of brown looking whenever they're closed. But when his little polyps come out, he'll actually have some nice pop of color. This is kind of like a finger toadstool type of leather here. We're going to put him off to probably the side just for some good fill-in. Like I said, they're mostly going to get moved at some point anyway to see how happy they are. Is that the same one as the green tank, the big one? Um, there's a lot of different types of leathers. Like that, one, the big, big green one in there is like a true toadstool. Uh, this one looks a little bit more like a finger type toadstool, but we'll see as it grows. Kind of depends on flow and stuff sometimes too. So that's all our corals for now. Because we don't want to go too, too crazy. That's mm -hmm. a good amount for our first adding of corals. We it's have a good, good selection. Already looking good. Got everything to let it open. Um, you know, and definitely way more to come. Oliver but, asked if I picked out any of the corals. Come on, man. We know Jess picked these out. She's got the, <laughs> she's got the touch. <laughs> you couldn't take credit. <laughs> I guess I could I wouldn't have. tell anybody. Um, yeah, so it looks good. So we got a pop of some red and some pinks and stuff in there. Um, a nice base of bright greens and yellows. Mm -hmm. So already nice to see some color in there. Um, Gavon Carrillo says, you guys should, sh sorry, me, sorry if I butchered that name. <laughs> I tried to put a little, you know, accent <laughs> on it. Uh, you guys should share. <laughs> Keenan's laughing at me. You, you guys should share your lighting schedule and setup. So if you guys go back to the video where we set up the lights, we actually showed that we're using the AB plus schedule. We may have modified it a little bit, but that's kind of like the tried and true coloration slash growth um, setup. So lots of great questions coming in, Jess. All right. John Jackson says Prestige Worldwide. I had to say that just because I love that movie. What? It's from a movie. I can't even remember the name of it right now. All right, who knows the movie? Yeah, John the Jackson. Movie? Or John Jackson. What's the name of that movie? Prestige Worldwide. It's a uh, Step Brothers. Oh. I think I've seen it. Maybe been a while. I don't yeah, remember I stuff that, that very well. So the frag is looking very nice. Um, got some corals in there. We definitely need a better lens filter, so yes. put us up with that link you guys, if you know. It's just like we said last week. If you want to send us booze, if you want to send us <laughs> lens, lens filters. filters for an SLR camera, <laughs> we'll take it. You know? we're, we're here to receive. Like, I don't know. Um, but the tank looks good. The corals are beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love it. Love it's it. looking really good, you guys. Um, ask Jess. <laughs> okay? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I was trying to remember if there was something I was forgetting. <laughs> no, I think it's time for Ask Jess. If you want your questions answered, you have asked Jess at waterboxaquariums.com. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. All right, you guys. Again, if you want to get your questions answered live here on Waterbox Live, um, email us, askjess at waterboxaquariums.com. If we don't get them here live, we'll get them through the email. Uh, we got three questions here today, and the first one comes from LJ. 
He says, really enjoying your frag setup series of videos. I have three questions. Ah, oh, come on, we're only going to allow one. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> they all kind of tie together. I was like, all okay. right. Uh, first, is the pump compartment of your sump large enough to accommodate two pumps? Second, how would you set up in terms of fittings, et cetera, a dual pump system? My understanding is that having a backup pump in and ready to go is prudent. Finally, how, would, how and where would you place a chiller in your system? Okay. Question one, um, is our pump chamber big enough for two pumps? I'm sure you could find two pumps, brands mm -hmm. or whatever, that do fit in there. It's a pretty good sized chamber. Um, that would have to be for your own research to figure out on that yeah. one. Um, as far as fitting two together, like I said, that would probably be check out our user group on Facebook. There's a lot of information on people who have modified plumbing or done their own thing. So on Facebook, it's official water box group on there. And um, he said, like, I don't think necessarily running two return pumps is all that important. Mm -hmm. We don't really do it on any of our systems. And I think it's kind of a smaller group of people that do. There's no harm to it. But I feel that having a backup pump available in your house yes. that you can swap in in case of failure is much easier to handle mm -hmm. than trying to run two, plumb them together, yeah. have one, you know, because either way you still have to be there to turn the second one on. Yeah. So, or running both at small feet. Like, I feel that just have a backup, purchase the second one, always have one available is way more important than plumbing two to one return line. Yep. And then for a chiller, um, on the four foot and up models, there is a dry compartment. You may be able to find one that fits into there, or you may just have to put it off to the side. Yeah. I love the advice on the two pumps. Um, I've, I've seen it time and time again where, you know, someone doesn't have a backup pump, and that can be pretty catastrophic. So definitely, yes. if you can, if it's not the, the same type of pump you buy for your system, get, a, get one that's less expensive just as a backup just something that will swap into the current plumbing and everything mm -hmm. just as easily it doesn't have to be as good of a pump um, but your likelihood to go out and find the exact pump that you need the same day that your pump dies is going to be really really hard um, so do just have a backup of something on hand that you can swap in there yep all right next question is from dustin smith he says hello jess i recently decided to switch from fresh water to salt water I purchased the Marine 35.1. I've been watching YouTube and Facebook videos from various reefers and noticed they open fish and coral from the box. They are mailed and acclimate them for a few hours and place them straight into the display tank. I'm wondering if this is correct. If not, please give guidance on how to best start my first reef tank. Would adding fish and a cleanup crew at the same time uh, before adding coral be okay? As you just saw, we took it from the bag and put it right in. Um, and that's for corals. A lot of times we don't really do a full acclimation on corals. Um, we do suggest dipping at least for the most part because a lot of times you may not know your source completely. Yeah. Um, but acclimating, a lot of times corals kind of self acclimate as they open. Yeah. Can you? Sure. Um, but like us, we usually will, if it's not from somewhere we just hand picked it or know their processes, we do a dip and then it goes into the tank. Um, fish, we do acclimate a little bit longer. We do not quarantine them because we only really get our fish from a handful of sources. And right. we know them really, really well. We know their practices. A lot of times we see the fish before we get them or they evaluate right. them. Right. Um, and then for fish and inverts, as you'll see on this build, you can go back to the videos, is we did inverts, then fish, then coral. Good so. deal. <clears throat> All right, next question is from uh, Brandon. He says, hey Jess, what is the optimal flow rate percentage wise with M2 Vectra. I'm having trouble silencing my 130.4 and wondering if running the M2 at 50% is too much. If I get the water level almost flowing into the emergency drain pipe, it's less noisy, but then you hear the gurgling down the drain, uh, emergency drain occasionally. Um, I'd say 50%, you could probably knock it down a little bit. Yeah. Um, I want to say on ours here, we're at three or four dots, so that's probably- Yeah, 25%. 25. Yeah, <coughs> on Mobius, we're running at 25%. Um, and it can handle more than that. It's just kind of where a sweet spot that we found. And this tank is a little bit shorter than a reef, so you can probably go a little bit higher in your percentage. But if you can't get consistency on keeping it running silent, probably just turn it back like one little bit if you're that close, and it should fine tune and even out that way. But 50% might be a little bit high. Yeah. Excellent. So that's it, you guys, for Ask Jess. If you guys have questions, again, email them. Ask <coughs> Jess at waterboxaquariums.com. We'll try to answer them here live. If we don't, She'll answer them by email. And Keenan's got questions from the stream. So what do we got? Yeah, I have a couple questions. Um, Beverly Fincannon is asking, will you be taking the corals off the plugs? 
Um, I do not because I think it helps a lot to be able to place them. A lot of times with their skeleton or their base, you are more likely to damage and crush them or hurt the flesh if you're trying to handle them and push them in spot. So I always keep the disc on. When they grow, you won't ever see them. Yeah. So I usually keep them right on the disc. Okay, ADH is asking, how do you know how far, how far to space out the frags? You have to kind of know what the coral is growing into. Um, you know, so learn a little bit about the corals you're getting or what you did. Some are going to grow taller and not as wide. Some are going to encrust onto the rock. Um, and I mean, no matter what you do, they're eventually going to have some kind of war. So there's going to be territory wars. There's going to be some stinging. Some corals may lose the battle. Others may meet at an impasse at a certain point and kind of go their opposite directions. Um, so, you know, there is no perfect way to play stuff. Just know what way they grow and kind of visualize, okay, if it's going to grow taller and out and you lost space, maybe put it off to the corner so it can fill in open water and not toward rock where other corals are. So if you guys haven't seen the 220.6 <clears throat> Dream build in a long time, but there are some wars happening there. That, yeah. That could be a great episode, actually. That's true, yeah. Talking so those, about the coral battles. Those have grown in for a while, and like yeah. certain corals, you'll see an exact line, especially in crusting corals mm -hmm. where they've met, they've battled a bit, and then they've kind of called a truce. They're like, yeah, all right, we're done here. And they go and grow in the other direction. <laughs> and then there's some corals that have sadly not had any chance and yeah. got wiped out. Yeah. Um, you know, so it, it's a give and take sometimes as things grow in. And a lot of times, I mean, people end up getting bigger tanks for that because they want to keep letting get more stuff and let it grow and stuff. So yeah. you see people progressively usually getting bigger and bigger tanks. Yeah, and in the wild, that's completely natural. Corals fight each other all the time. They find boundaries and they move on. Yep. Okay. Uh, another <laughs> I don't think Keno was ready for that. <laughs> I'm, reading, I'm reading through all the questions here. Uh, Binning Law, can the ATO and the 105.4 sump be turned into a refugium? Um, we get this question a lot, and the answer is yes. And if you want to find out how people have done it, go to our user group on Facebook. Lots of people have shown different ways. Ask on there, you know, go through posts. There's tons of people in our group. How many is it up to now? Uh, I think close to 8,000. Close to 8,000 people in there are willing to share their experience and tanks and stuff. Um, but I know there's a couple different ways people have done it, so check out there. Yeah. And here's a follow-up question to what you were just talking about. Um, and I just love it. Oh, here we go. Can corals wars affect the other corals in the tank, or is it just the ones that are battling? Um, I guess you could. I mean, there's chemical warfare, basically, within corals. Yeah. There really is. Um, where, like, leathers and stuff like that, if they're super stressed, could create enough toxins in the water that something more sensitive, like SPS, or really sensitive LPS would be affected without actually being touched by it. Um, a lot of times you'll see like in a full SPS tank, you do not have things like leathers or things like that that have a lot of toxins. So yes, technically chemical warfare can affect the whole tank, um, but you don't put like soft corals in with like the hardest of corals uh, for that reason. And also running carbon and proper chemical media helps alleviate that sometimes yeah. too. Yep. Okay, here's another question from John Jackson. Are there such things as saltwater plecos? Uh, yes, snails. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, like tangs, uh, tangs and algae bunnies and um, a couple fish like that are constantly grazing on the rocks, so they yeah. would be kind of the algae eater of the saltwater world. Yeah. I think yeah. that's good for now. All right. We're ready for the winner. Excellent. Of the and guys, before we announce this winner, because we do have a winner of the World of White Corals gift card, I do want to say that if you are local to the Orlando area and you're looking to pick up a water box, definitely check out World of White Corals. They have most of our tanks in stock, a really good selection. They also offer financing. So if you want to do installments or split pay, definitely check them out. Show them some love. Uh, definitely got to head down there and support your local fish store. Um, and we got the winner of the Worldwide Quarrels gift card. Give, give him a drop ball here. He is on YouTube, and it is Brian Fleener. So, Brian, congratulations, my friend. Congratulations. You got the Worldwide Quarrels gift card. Um, so, that's Worldwide awesome. Worldwide gift card. Yes. So, email support at waterboxaquariums.com. They will get your information and get you hooked up with your gift card so you can go shopping. Um, so, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Next week, we got more of this coming. How many weeks do we have left? We have two weeks left. One week is oh more gosh. fish. One week is more corals. Um, so, I'll say we've gone a little bit light for the first two weeks. It's about to get real. Yeah. As far as this tank is going to be looking really good. Um, 
Got some more fish and everything coming next week. And then the final week, we'll be adding more corals. There are gift cards to be given away every week. There are mm -hmm. swag to be given away every week. And you got to tune in to win the stuff. And, the, and then we're surprising you every week. And there's a frag week. being yes. given away. A two whole, frag. Oh, yeah, two, two frag. Yes. XR, two frags with uh, radion lights over them. You guys, this has been a really cool series. We appreciate you guys tuning in. We'll see you next week. Um, yeah. So Thanks. thank you. See you next week.